on your platform. Hold it, Tommy. Hold it, Tommy. So you a comedian, <laughs> you a radio host, uh -oh. yes. and now you got a game show? I'm finna go on Shannon Sharp show and accuse you of you stealing my whole on damn there. For real. I thought you were supposed to go there and enlighten people. That is entirely too hot. That's all I'm saying. You are not supposed to be at the gas station making life decisions. You just at the pump. Just Negro, did I eat today? I can't get no half a tank. I got six cigarettes. I can't even do it. That used to be, if you had 10, 15 dollars, you could go to the gas station with confidence. Because you knew you was either going to be full or damn near full. If you had a 20, you ain't even talk to the person at the counter. You just 20 on the left, bitch. Used to be, if you put $15 in your tank, you had time to bond with your vehicle. You had time to put the nozzle in and set the clicker and look through your car and clean off the dashboard and look through your CDs and run in the store and get some Pringles and a snapper and it'll still be pumping. Now if you put $15 in, you can't even turn around good for that summer bitch click. As soon as you put it in, just click, click. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey, what's happening? Be walking around, cleaning the windshield. <laughs> Speaking to gay, hey, girl, what's happening? What you doing? <laughs> hey, hey, you. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Okay, you go in there, bring me a wine cool. Cat Williams, stop it. There's some slick I mean, one of your stand up, um, one of your stand up, you was, you was being sarcastic saying that if Trick Daddy can own a restaurant, you can do anything. Look, well. What the ugly people get? your mouth keep ricky smiley name much about keep all og's name your mouth if you don't like a person if you don't like a person you don't say it. i told people that i didn't think you was funny i ain't never said i didn't like you and i'm glad i didn't never say i didn't like you because me by me not thinking you were funny i actually saw you one day and i was laughing my ass off i was crying laughing one day remember that little boy put you in the hand like i was crying fucking laughing that day you scary curls to have perm wearing ass stop man. listen man stop talking about other to be relevant in the game, the trend. Cause I thought nothing. Like you made enough money, you know. <laughs> you made enough money. You did enough. You know what? Why are you on my material? Right. You know what's that about? You right. know. And then you know people want to jump up. Oh, he didn't know. He didn't steal your. So yes, he did. Yeah. I mean, no one else has did that. Mm -hmm. to, so to this us. was on his talk show. Which talk was his TV talk show? His TV talk show. Okay, this was uh, the one he had on NBC just recently. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Mark Curry says that you're still stealing his jokes. Hey man, listen to me. Yeah. Now this, I'm getting sick of this right here. Yeah. Mark Curry need to grow up. Steve Harvey ain't been on stage since 2015. Well, you said you used him on one of your shows. Ask Mark Curry what joke he talking about. Tell him to grow I, up, man. I think it was on Little Big Shots. He was what? making the record. Are you kidding me? Yeah. He said. Are you kidding me? He said that he confronted you about it before, and then even and after he that, still he still again. ain't said what joke it is. Get a life, get a career. Right. Go do something, man. Well, he's thinking this is gonna help him. This, he's thinking this is gonna help him get a, a stand-up special now with like Netflix or HBO. Well, good. Go ahead and get one. I got five of them, six of them. Yeah. Go get one. That'll be good. I'll be happy for him. Do you think he will get one out of I this? I think he deserves one. Yeah. Yeah. Halloween was a trip. Halloween. We couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Hey, kids, please. Mama sent us down to liquor store, put boxes on us. We didn't know what we were. I don't know what we are. <laughs> I don't know. She didn't tell us. I think with UPS, I guess, I don't know. Every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. Every year. I just had a brown box. I wasn't nothing sad, I just not asked my father, could I have a new outfit? And he said, no, just wear the same one. It was just a brown box. And he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. A uh, guy told That's a little ways. Okay, so Mike Epps said, I put everybody on and still putting comics on today. None of y'all brave enough or care enough to work with him or come around him. Stop making this shit so bad. We comedian. I put him in a movie when no one wants to work with him. Some of that shit he said was true and some of it was not. At the end of the day, we all black men in a business that is not ours. I cracked on his jacket because that's what comics do. All this shit is marketing dummies. 
All that he said, y'all mad at me. Get the fuck out of here. We having fun. Y'all stressing. Also, uh, Mike Epps put out another picture. He said, I know what the problem is. We all need another Friday. Put everybody in a movie. All of us. Get the best win on screen. Fuck all the internet. Forget the money. Forget the status. Forget Hollywood. Let's go big, bro. At Ice Cube, make history, yo. All right, I did get a little jealous, man. Cat broke the internet and didn't say my name, good or bad. I need to press too, nigga. Shit. <laughs> say something about me in there, man. <laughs> say something bad about me. I don't care. I got a special coming out. I need to press. <laughs> man, we need a movie together. <laughs> Damn. Yo. I mean, what, what did Cat do to Ali? What did he do to you, man? So let's go to the store. Let me speed it up. Shreveport. We in Shreveport. The song out is um, Every Day I'm Hustling. I walk out to get ghetto. I turn back around. You know how the arena people look in the goddamn yellow shirts. All of them are locked arms standing in front of the door. I'm like, hey, let me slide through y'all. And the lady who was in front of, sitting in front of my door, she said, Ali, I can't let you back in the building. I said, what? Ali, I can't let you back in the building. I said, what? So they don't know what's going on. It's just been a sign. Don't let Ali Steve back in this building. Okay, cool. Cat's. Matt, security at the time, dude's name is Carl. Carl comes and he's talking over the shoulders of the security people. I'm standing outside, me and Ghetto. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, Carl, what's up? He's like, man, Cat, I don't know what the fuck is up. Man, Cat, I don't want you back in the building. I said, what? Man, he ain't say nothing. And, but I can see Cat and his white boy talking. Like, I can see them. And I'm like, what the fuck is up? So this nigga turns back to me. They, they wrote me a check and they came and paid me. And this is how they paid me. I'm standing there and over the shoulder of security, I just see a check come over his arm. I see niggas paying me oh, like I'm some fucking bum nigga. Like y'all, I hand out. Okay, cool. It's two ways I can handle this. I could be an ignorant nigga and just be law running nigga in the streets, then do it in the streets. But then a nigga open himself up and he said, nigga, this celebrity boxing thing, nigga, I started it. And um, they niggas looked at me like I was crying. I said, you started. No, first people I saw was with a DM male. And nigga, way before you, nigga, you wasn't around at the time. And I said, oh shit, maybe I can get this shit settled with this nigga in his ring for a bag. Because he be talking this boxing shit. So since you started, let's make it full circle. You haven't had a battle. Once you started with me, now nah, I want to fight. I, Cause I'm, 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 I'm good with engaging in the war, and I like that you think that you're gonna win because you don't understand what I, the the level that I'm gonna go to. Like right now, it's people saying, "Well, cat got them hands for you. Cool. I wanna know? I think the world wanna know what happened between you and Alisa Deep. I know you said the you world talk couldn't about possibly want to know that. Know, He's man. not Who famous was? enough for the world to want to know that. Uh, at least because my side of the world doesn't want to know that. See, well, my side of the world. Here's, here's the thing. What happened, man? A lot of times, what liars do first is they set up a narrative and a scenario. Like Michael Blackson just got on national TV and told people, yeah, I got a beef with Cat Williams and Cat is mad at me about this and because I said this and I didn't even mean it like that. And the whole time, he's never talked to me. That's how he feels. He's heard I'm angry. I've not had a conversation with him. It's the same with your Ali Sadiq. So now if that's the story, then let me see if I got this correct. A guy I've never met was supposed to be doing a show with me and I got so angry, even though I hadn't met him, that I had security keep him out of the building. See, that's the problem with lies. They're, they're faulty from their inception, sir. I'm the person in the story that doesn't have a grudge to feel. I don't care why I didn't like Cat Williams. I would get to the bottom of it. This is not one of those stories. First of all, the actual truth of this matter is every city that I go to, I already have the comedians who are opening up for me. Not just this tour, but for the 17 100 city tours previous to this. I never go to the city and go, hey, do you guys have some comics here? I'd like to add them to my show. I just don't do it. I travel with the comedians um, that are coming to your city. We're one unit and one team when we come. That is to let you understand that no comic was fin to come join us that evening because there isn't space for it. I still have to do an hour at the end of this. There's a limited amount of time. So we could just start there. Second of all, I don't care where you're from, what the venue is, how cool you are with the people that work there. Cat Williams show means Cat Williams show. That means don't nothing move but the money. There ain't no loud talking and voice raising and, well, I, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How, let me look on the advertisements and see, do I see your name or face, sir? Whoever you may be. Where would you even get the entitlement to be having this question? This is like me insisting that the Lakers put me on as a starter. <laughs> and I won't take no for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. That's how it would have gone if I wasn't there because the truth is I wasn't there. All of this happened before I got there. He said, I'm supposed to be on this show. I said, well, well, maybe he was expecting to get some sort of a payment. And, and now he thinks he doesn't get to get paid because we already have a tour. I, I wouldn't want that. Pay him for performing. So he got the check of the performer. This is what he's angry about. Imagine the audacity. I would have gave him the celebrity boxing match he asked for if I thought he was a celebrity. Oh, come on, man. You know Ali a celebrity. Come on, Sir, I'm not talking. I, I didn't mean that disparagingly. Yeah. I meant that in ticket sales, my n Ticket sales. That's what I meant. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing 7,000 in your hometown while you go do 300. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm talking statistics. 
I'm talking about the biggest and baddest thing going. And you a person trying to get in. Why would you be mad? It's, it's ridiculous. I'm offended. <laughs> I'm offended. You believe it's about ticket sales? Yeah, it's always been about ticket sales and comedy. I'm sorry you caught me at a bad time, but since you asked me, I said I'd jump on because I'm still barely waking it, up. It, I'm not even camera ready. This ain't, this ain't even about comedy. Yeah, about what, what happened is, is but, but, I'm going to give you a synopsis. Yeah, I got to be it's fair, dude, you know, to be it's fair. A dude named, it's a dude named Dancing Dave that, that's yes. in the, that was celebrity boxing, Dancing Dave. Didn't say, he took a fight on two weeks notice against another celebrity boxer. They paid Dancing Dave 150,000. They paid the other they paid the other one 250,000. It wasn't about no it wasn't about no tickets. It's about the celebrities boxing. You only doing um 3 minute 3 rounds 1 minute. So the tickets are going to be sold anyway. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying when you make your point in that manner. When I'm saying that I bring my own people. I don't know why he was there. I I paid him cuz he just showed up. But I was there for 2 days. I performed both days. The first night I performed in front of Ashima Franklin. The next night I performed after Ashima Franklin. It was just that it's just that simple. And I wish I was a sentimental nigga who would hold pictures and all that. But all this can be confirmed with Alex Thomas and mostly everybody who was rational that was there. They're like, no, it's no way for this nigga not to say he don't know this nigga because he's been in a vehicle with this nigga voluntarily. I'm riding with Ali to the hotel. Right. And, and then the other part is this. How do you write a nigga a check that you don't know his name? That it's up random. So in your in your business of comedy, in your business of comedy, that you know comedy. So you have went to places and random comics just showed up and people paid them because they they showed up and they wanted to perform. Uh, he wanted to perform. I felt bad he didn't get a chance to. So I paid this nigga for two days. <laughs> well, you know, he's kind of, that's kind of how he is. Uh, I knew you was going to say well, it. Hey, man, if you, you watch this, watch this, brother. If you yeah. look up that, if you look up his network, you Google that nigga's network and you Google mine. We we are, we are $500,000 apart. No, no, so why would this no, no. Why would this give me 15? Why would this nigga give me a random ass? He just walk up and get $1,500 to, for one performance. Damn. I didn't even, I didn't cash the check. I didn't cash the right. check. I gave, I gave the money back. I didn't care. I put a nigga check up. I jumped in my fucking truck. And nobody in Houston is going the seventy thousand, the seven thousand fuckers that was there. Nobody's gonna believe this shit. Nigga, I'm like, wait a minute. No. That says uh, that, bro. That said, and I'm and I'm talking. And I'm being real, bro. And this ain't no arrogant shit. It's it's like I don't know nobody who you could find that does not know me. And you saying that you've been doing stand up for twenty for thirteen years and you don't know me. Yeah, but don't, don't take it as no, an insult. No, no, I'm, I don't, what, 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 no. What, what I'm, I'm not taking this as an insult. Yes. I'm taking this as this. This is what I'm taking this as. This is what I'm taking this as. L.A. That's all I'm taking it as, as L.A. And, I, and I've always said this about L.A. L.A. comics and comedy is in a bubble yes. that, that they have no idea what's really happening in the stand-up. That is absolutely true. So I'm not, 100%. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking it as hands on. I'm just saying, and it, I can understand because you just said you're from LA. So it, 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 it nullifies and explains a lot to me. Yeah, because you're right about that. We actually are in a bubble. We believe that we're the best of anybody in the United States. We believe we're care, we're comparable to New York City. We believe all these things. Hmm. All right, that part is true. The only difference is, is I don't really aspire to that anymore. Which once, all right. This is what and I used to say this about LA comics. LA comics believe all what you said. Yes. With one successful comic from LA, DL Hughes. One successful comic from LA. Everybody else is in yes. France, but LA believe LA believes that wholeheartedly yes. with one championship. Things like yes. the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> That's why. Thank you for liking the story, sir. Bro, I have delivered, I have delivered so much great content that. It's insane. Like it's insane. And when I hear people, I, when I hear comics, I'm never, I'm never about people not knowing who I am because it's millions of people. That's true. But, absolutely but, right. But when it comes to comedy, yes, I'm a fucking juggernaut. With, with some real monsters, man. I too yeah. with the Kings. You know, I've been on stage with Sid, DL, and Bernie Mac at the same time. It's always been a camaraderie. Right. You know what I mean? We're going out here to give the people the best show we can give them, and that's the way we've always promoted comedy shows. Now, you know, to turn this into some type of little beef, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That ain't how I do. Now, you know, I done heard all of the YouTubes and I done heard all the interviews and all like that, but that ain't got nothing to do with me. So this is a little beef thing that everybody want to want to start because you want to make a name for yourself. That's cool. Do you? You ain't going to do it right here, though. You, you, you ain't going to build a reputation on Steve Harvey. So I've been doing this a long time. 
So now, whatever you're going to do is cool. Just do you. You do you. See, I have nothing to prove. All I got to do is keep being Steve Harvey that he's been for over 20 years. Yeah. Or walking out there on stage. Yeah. And bringing that sunshine. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to bring it. But, you know, when you hear all the chatter, you know, it, it kind of, you go. So it kind of hit you? Kind of like, I mean, it was all on the what? Yeah. For what? But, you know, like all. And we love you. Bro, look here. We little love dogs, you. Little dogs bark the most. <laughs> Okay, now, <laughs> please understand that a rock wild that got off the plane last night in Detroit. See, here's, here's what my father told me. The reason I ain't been coming into town getting all of this back and forth. Yeah. This is what my father told me a long time ago. Dogs don't bark at park cars. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? They only bark at a car that's moving. But now when you run your little ass over there and you and the car stop, you got to get right back up on your car. Because that car now, the car might start up again. Don't get your little tail mad. <laughs> but you know, it's like this though, Frank. You know, I always been real cool with Cat. You know, it, 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 it should have been like this. You know, if you gonna take that angle, yeah. what you should have did was call your boy and say, "Hey, man, look, I'm just gonna be selling some tickets. This is how I'm gonna do it." Yeah. You know, but let me know because you're gonna use my name as the stepping stone, mm -hmm. so you can, like he say, try to prove that he number one. Right. I took my family on vacation. You know, I was out with my kids playing and stuff. You know, we've been hanging out. I come back, all this stuff on YouTube, all these interviews over Detroit, all these radio stations. I got family up here, friends. Yeah. You know, Steve, man, when you gonna say something? I don't gotta say nothing. I am the original. Kings of Comedy. That's right. I can go with that right there. Right. Now, until you done sold them kind of tickets, move them numbers, and you done been on the stage with some more gorillas. See, it's cool when you've been the only gorilla on stage, yeah. but I've been on stage with more gorillas. When you've been the only giant on the stage, and you got to share a stage with another giant, there should be a sense of humility about that. There should be a sense of respect. And right now, it just ain't no respect. You understand? That's another story. Club Shay Shay, the interview heard around the world. <laughs> and I don't know, my it, my take is probably gonna be really, really boring. Um, number one, I want people to keep in mind, 
my dad has been dead for 15 years so i have not been fully immersed in the world of comedy i don't know the ins and outs of that like that anymore because my end has been gone for 15 years you know i've got friends in the game but we don't sit and talk about you know stuff like that so um, i don't know cat williams uh never met him that's one person i never did get to meet when my dad was alive but from everything that i've ever heard my dad you know say he's always seemed like a stand-up dude so i have no qualms no quarrels with him um i thought the interview was hilarious entertaining that man dropped so many uh one-liners that i'm sure we are going to be wearing down to the ground in this year of our lord 2024 but um i one of my biggest takeaways in watching people's responses was how people were kind of like oh that's kind of sad like outside of being you know tickled by it and i've seen people say stuff like it's like watching you know your uncles go at it and you're like oh why can't we all just get along well i mean because everybody doesn't get along like i think that's one of the mis conceptions about comedians and i guess it's due to the fact that what they do brings so much joy to others that the perception the expectation is that behind closed doors everybody gets along everybody just it's just it's in love and no it's not it's they've always been competitive like i it's always been as far as i've ever witnessed in watching my dad it's always been um kind of cutthroat like you'll have you know people beefing like same as in within your family just because y'all related don't mean y'all all get along right it's, comedy's no different um but for me, Cat Williams has my utmost appreciation and respect for giving my dad his props and his flowers. And I felt like it was genuine. There are some people who have given, you know, my dad his flowers now that he's dead that I'm looking at like, oh, you know, doggone well, he wasn't doing it when he was alive. And that, not just famous people, just people all across the board. As my dad used to say, you ever want to be loved by everybody? You ever want to be special? Just die. It's real easy to give lip service when somebody dies and you go, oh, they were so wonderful. And that's not how you felt when they were alive. But when Cat spoke of my dad, for me, I felt his heart. I felt that it was genuine and I appreciate it. Um, again, it's been 15 years since my dad's been dead. If you follow me at all, you know I've said this repeatedly, like it does my heart good to know that my dad was a stand up guy, that the man that I knew him to be was who he actually was to people. Cause that's the thing, like we can love people and think they one way and then find out later, no. And I say like in 15 years, if he was an asshole, somebody by now would have been like, eh, let me tell you about that my love. So <laughs> that, that is not the case with my dad makes me so proud and i just really appreciate what i believe the genuine love and respect that cat williams showed my father it is so much appreciated much love and mad props to cat williams i would love to sit down and just have a conversation with cat williams because i think that is probably be mo the most entertaining and gem dropping conversation i probably would have in my life <laughs> outside of conversations with my dad so yeah so that's my take like i said probably boring but that's what i thought again much love and respect to cat williams <laughs> steve harvey here yeah you thought I was going to run, huh? Y'all wondering, where's Steve Harvey? I know people been waiting on my response to what Cat Williams done said on Club Shay Shay. I was on Club Shay Shay before Cat Williams. See, the reason why I took so long, see, I had to pray to God to give me the strength not to get mad. God talked to me every day, every damn day. I've been in this business a long time, boy. See, you done messed up with the wrong one. See, you just sitting there talking that bullshit to Shannon Shaw, talking about I couldn't be a movie star. Yeah, yeah, uh. I guess you didn't see you got served. Yeah, that dad was acting. Huh? Then you're going to say, I took Mark Curry's jokes and stole his show. Boy, yeah, boy, you got the nerve to call me Mr. Potato Head. Calling my ass Mr. Potato Head. Yeah, 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 yeah. Woo! That was a good one. I ain't going to lie. That was a good one. But I digress. So what? I wore a wig. Huh? People asking, why did you wear a wig? Where and when did you get the wig? Whatever. But your ass thought that shit was real. Everybody thought my shit was tight. They thought it was a real hairline. Huh? See, cat? <laughs> you, don't, you don't fuck with a dog. You a cat. I'm a dog. Huh? We both from Ohio. Seth, you from Dayton. And I'm from, yeah, you guessed it, Cleveland. All day. See? You know what you done did? You done started a war. Yeah. Anytime, any place, boy. Anytime, any place. You know, I feel like a rapper. Yeah. This here's a rap battle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to spit a couple bars for your ass, cat. Huh? Watch this. I'm going to show you some real skill, boy. See, you done fucked up, boy. Better watch your ass. <laughs> that dead interview might be your last. <laughs> Talking all that shit and telling them lies. <laughs> I see your ass in the street, boy. I'm about to swell up them eyes. Yo, I don't give a damn what people say about Steve. <laughs> but I'm going to get that money. You best believe. Yeah. <laughs> you got one more time to fuck with me, little dude. Because this here going to be a real family feud. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you that right now. Oh, yeah. Williams family. Harvey family. Let's play the feud. Survey set. Cat Williams, if you're ever around him, ask him, how much money has he ever, how much money has he given away? Just given away. 
Like just ask him that. Just be like, how much money have you given away? If you're around him, if you're interviewing him, just ask him. Because it has to be insane. Cat is one of the most generous people that you're ever going to meet. And a lot of people don't know that. He don't get a lot of press and love for that. One of the most generous ever. He's had to have given away. I don't even know the number. It, ha it has to be crazy. Because there's a lot of people with stories about him giving money to. Case in point, I remember I, remember I was at the comedy store performing one night. And got off stage. And this was like early on. Early on before really a whole bunch of stuff was happening. <clears throat> for me. I get off stage and I'm everybody like, man, good set, good set, good set. So many people saying that. Some girl came and put something in my hand and said, good set, but I didn't see her. I just heard her and she walked off. And I thought it was like a phone number in my hand. And when everybody walked away and stuff, I looked in my hand and it was a thousand dollars. And then I looked out in the audience trying to find the girl. And I'm like, man, I can't remember her face. And I couldn't see her. And I was just like, who gave me a thousand dollars? But anyway, I just was like, wow. And later on, about a month later, somebody told me that that happened to them. And they said Cat Williams was in the audience. And I put two and two together and was like, wow, he did that to me then. He never tell you. He never he never makes it known or any of that. So if you're ever around him, ask him. If anybody, if you're ever around him, ask him. How much money have you just given away? The real shit, bro. I came home. I ain't have nothing, bro. Cat Williams called me to his show. Uh, gave me front row seats, bro, called me to his show. And when I was leaving the show, I thought he threw me some weed in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel. But it was $15,000, bro. And I, and, and bro, when I see him, I'm going to return the favor, bro. Whatever I got in my pocket, bro. Like, that dude did something for me, bro. That I get emotional talking about it, bro. Like, I really needed it at the time. And I wouldn't stay in nowhere. I mean, I was staying at a hotel with my kids in downtown New Orleans. I ain't even have a nowhere to stay there yet, bro. And uh No, I had just got I had just got the house. I was at the house. I had just rented the house from baby. And uh Cat Williams gave me fifteen thousand dollars, bro, all hundreds, bro. I thought it was weed, my boy City say, Ooh, them gave you some weed and threw it back there. I unwrapped the towel with the rubber band. It was $15,000, bro. <laughs> bro, man, bro. I'll never forget that, bro. I just want to see him and give him $15,000, bro. Like, <laughs> nigga, a real nigga for that, bro, you know. <laughs> nigga, and they ain't even know me before I went in, bro. Like, you know what I mean? They ain't give me nothing when I came home. Who was hollering free boosted and ain't give me nothing when I came home? It touched me, bro. It touched me, bro. Like, and they gave me $15,000, bro. They had my hollering free boosted all over the world with that bag and ain't give me nothing, bro. That dude gave me $15,000, bro. Cat Williams is a real nigga, dog. Then he did it. Then the way he did it, he, he threw it in there, bro, and just left. And just was gone. He ain't say, huh, bro? He ain't say, he just threw it in the window, bro. I opened it, bro, a little bit down the road. So I couldn't even turn and say thank you. I couldn't even, man, bro. i never forget that dude, bro. If, bro, if he fall, he always got me, Jit. If he fall, he always got me, bro. He would come get it from me. And ask the right questions. And Kat, just, he, I, I like that. He didn't try to keep talking over uh, Cat Williams, which made it a great interview because sometimes the the person, the interviewer, can make it about themselves. And I think Shannon did a good job of sometimes he. I'm pretty sure he had more questions, and he wanted to jump in. But when Cat Williams wanted to finish a point, he didn't stop him. He let him go. So that was a, that's what made it a really good interview. Cat exposed the whole industry. You ain't so crazy, KB. I'm trying, I'm trying to tell you. I said I think that there's no more talented guys. They keep the talented guys at the bottom, and they say that they're crazy. They say that they're nothing. They say that they're bust. And then they leech off of them and get somebody else to remix what they're saying and what they're doing. They stand on their shoulders, and they do it on the big white companies. I've been saying this since I came to the Internet. The go-along, get-along gang is real. They want to harvest talent. 
They harvest everything. Cat Williams said that Cedric the Entertainer took his joke and put it on the main stage. And guess what happens in real life? After Cedric the Entertainer says it in his own way, because all they do is remix your, your same joke. And then they say it on a bigger platform. And then now it becomes theirs. You copying them now. There's no talented people no more. Them people that want to get into super famous, they buy their way in and they give up their ass, they, their anus to get in. Now, I've been saying this for the last three years. But when you have a person like Cat Williams that say something like this, that they grouped up against them. Remember when, remember when I said there's a go along, get along game? Cat Williams said that these guys stayed in a group. They grouped up against them. He mentioned Cedric the Entertainer. He mentioned Steve Harvey. And he mentioned Ricky Smiley. He talked about gatekeepers. All of what I said, this man has said. And he's been saying it. We don't got no more people like that. They stay in groups of hate. They find other people like them now. In this day and age, if you a f***ed up off the wall person, you find other people that's f***ed up off the wall like you, and then you join their group because everybody needs somebody, right? There are some celebrities you bet not say nothing about or you will have a mob of strangers. I'm talking about a whole mob of strangers after your ass. And you won't even know what happened. But it ain't no go along, get along game. Ain't no go along, get along game. <laughs> it's a mob of strangers after you say something about Rihanna, Cardi B, Beyonce, Oprah. Man, there's some 40, 50 year old ladies that are goddamn take off their pearls for Oprah. There's some 60 year olds that'll hit you with a cane by Oprah. I noticed, I find it mighty strange that um, Cat Williams is supposed to be crazy, supposed to be all these derogatory names. He's a he's a drug addict. He's all these things. They already invalidated him, right? The man do a million something views in, in seven, eight hours. And then every, almost every comedian respond to him. Almost every comedian he talked about the ones that he went in and on, they responded to him quickly. And then not only did they respond to him, I noticed something else that maybe y'all didn't notice. I noticed they didn't respond to what he actually said. I noticed all they did was talk about how he might be mad or get anger out of his heart. They never addressed the things he said. Cat Williams used it as a, uh, Kevin Hart used it as a chance to promote his movie and, and said that the man had, had some hate in his heart. But we can look at the timeline of Kevin Hart to where I do remember you saying very boldly that your brand, you got to have boundaries. And this was your words. This is not me taking Cat Williams' side or nothing like that. Your words, before you got all that money, right, your words was you got to have boundaries. You got to have boundaries that you just won't go past because I have a brand. And, I, and let, me, let me say I'm paraphrasing, even though I think I'm stating it verbatim. But let me say I'm paraphrasing because you got a lot of money. So I'm paraphrasing. So this might not be verbatim, but people can go hear you say something like this. Yeah, you got to have boundaries. Yeah, yeah, I got a brand, and my brand is everything to me. I got to protect my brand. Before he got that big money, he said he would never wear a dress. Two years after he wore that dress, he signs a big deal. How? He said he wouldn't do it, but he ended up doing it. Williams was trying to always say, brand. Brandon don't wear a dress. Because <laughs> P. Diddy be wanting the body. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, do you or is this? No, he was saying it in the media, so I thought he was heckling me. He was really trying to help me at the time. I didn't know that. 
<laughs> was immature. Right. I feel like, dang, why I'm trying to just uh, trying to make it. Why are you bashing me? And then he was trying to warn me, you know, don't get in the dress. So the awakened brand and you couldn't pay him a trillion dollars to get in the dress. Message. Yeah. You know, for me, I can only speak for my journey. Once I put the dress on and I had that fire, that fire was put out. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Yeah. And I only did it one time. So imagine doing it three times, four times. But then Tyler Perry did it, he got stronger. I don't know the rules. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, this is what happened to me. I'm not here to knock another brother because that's their path. Yeah. That's one thing I don't do is knock my brothers because that's their path. But I'm saying my path, when I put on a dress, it came with a, 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 a demon baby mama and a starter kit for, for hell. That's what happened to me. You haven't seen me since, to be honest. But then I, 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 I feel stronger though. Would you like warn other stand-up comedians about the dress? Yeah, I had an interview too where I, 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 I would do it. I kept no, her ex is Cat Williams. Definitely is. What was it like dating Cat Williams? Outside of all the crazy antics and the FBI raids and you know the going to jails and stuff. <laughs> Wait, you were you there during the FBI raid? Yes. But so like. If you were there and the FBI I got came a gun in. pointed at my chest and was told to stand up at like nine in the morning. My ass was walking around because I had a, I probably had got busy. I had a t-shirt on mm -hmm. and I had to get down on like a floor and it was like lasers and scopes at my chest. Mm -hmm. And it was the scariest of my whole entire life. And I was definitely traumatized after an FBI raid. And then I had to go and like stand trial because he had like a whole thing and FBI was after me. I, left I feel like they be with Cat Williams. They do. They, they don't like him. They do. Do you miss Cat Williams? I miss his wisdom. Oof. I like that. I like that. His guidance, his hand on me. Mm. And, he, and if anybody's worked up with Cat or they knows Cat, they know that he can put a hand on you and help guide you. He's guided so many comedians to the next He's level. He's a very intelligent He's, brother. He had the highest IQ test score that you can ever get. Cat wow. has it mom is a doctor and his dad is like a like a scientist like Are you he, serious? yeah he's i had no idea was he really like a pimp mm -hmm. <laughs> not necessarily not a pimp. Or... he was selling a paper route he was like kind of like whatever trying to hustle and he was throwing papers to like a house and it was a house full of prostitutes and their pimp had just got shot and then he wanted to kind of save the women because they didn't know what to do. So he kind of took some women under his and, wing and, and helped them get right. some money. <laughs> yes. Shout and out that, to Kat. Yeah. <laughs> now, and, now, why did you and Kat split up? Just all the legal stuff. Like, it was, it started to become overwhelming. It was too and, much. I, and I felt That's like, fair. is my future going to revolve around constant arrests, constant raids, constant. I mean, it's I. It's a wild I, life being with Kat. I had to go in front of a grand jury and testify in front of a grand jury in LA. Um, about uh, his tax evasion thing that he almost did a lot of time for. I had like I was hiding under my mama's uh, stairs at one point because the FBI Damn. were at her house trying to get me to testify against Cat. Like it was, it was that was lot. after an FBI raid. Right? This is a whole nother situation, right, right, right. you know. I left the country because they you just were didn't want to get involved. Didn't want to get involved, right. and I don't know nothing. I don't, I don't Shout out to you for holding it down, though. Yeah. She yeah. she a rider. Angela her. is a rider. Just say if Cat Williams, you know. Like with you, would you be open to a relationship with Cat Williams? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs>